world's greatest hip opener. So this can look really different for a lot of people. So what we like to do is couple some main movement patterns and then let people be playful with their positioning or where they feel the most limitations and go after those in a given uh, set and rep range. So when we do the hip opener, we like to get into a split stance position to where I'm really exaggerating my setup. So that way I'm getting hip extension on this back leg. And then I like to come to the ground to start. So when you're getting your setup um, dialed down. So I like to have that knee a little bit behind my hip joint being mindful that I'm not excessively arching through my low back. And then I like to drive knee over my toe and bring both hands to the ground. So this is kind of like a start position. Now from here, I can bring the top leg off the ground if I'm able to, and I'm trying to drive my knee over my toe as far as I can on this right side. And then I'm gonna drop my elbow to the floor. I'm gonna get a stretch on the back hip and on the front hip at the same time. And then I'll rotate to the ceiling. And then the other thing I can do, if I'm looking from the camera at the front on view here, is if my foot's fixed to the ground, I can use this inside arm to kind of push my knees into my elbows and then push my knee out to the side, or I can hold my foot down to create the rotation. Because when you squat, as our knee bends, our tibia has to create relative rotation um, to the knee and to the ankle joint. So it's just a drill to be able to kind of keep your foot on the ground and to create that rotation motion and capacity in a relatively unloaded position to kind of prep your body for squatting type movements. So, uh, and then we can layer in the hamstring as well. So if I'm layering in my hamstring, I'm kind of coming into this position where I'm driving the front knee straight. So maybe one rep would look like so. I get to my setup, I come down into this plank position, hold this position for a couple of seconds, drop the elbow to the ground, hold for a couple of seconds, rotate to the ceiling, hold for a couple of seconds, come back down, push my knee and elbow together for a couple of seconds, and then drive my knee out wide for a couple of seconds, and then straighten this front leg for a couple seconds. So I'm hitting just a couple different movement patterns. Doesn't really matter the sequence of what you do it, but just trying to hit those movements and we can kind of go after tissues on the front of the, uh, the, excuse me, the back of the knee, the back of the hip, the front of the hip, the side of the hip, and we can address the ankle on the leg that's planted and the hip on the leg that's trailing all at the same time. So a pretty big bang for your buck in regards to the amount of joints and tissues that are involved with one movement.